morning, church family. My name is Beth Jones, and it is a pleasure to be able to join with you again this week as we explore God's Word together. Please take a moment before we begin to pause this video and pray together as a family. Last week, we looked at a passage in Luke where Jesus demonstrated his authority. Jesus and the disciples traveled by boat across a large lake. But while they were in the middle of the lake, a huge storm came and the disciples were afraid because they thought the boat was going to sink. Jesus had been sleeping through the storm, so the disciples woke him up, saying that they were going to die. Jesus told the wind and waves to calm down and they did. Because Jesus is God, he has authority over nature. When they made it to the other side of the lake, Jesus met a man who was possessed by many demons. The man lived among the tombs and could not be controlled or contained by anybody. As soon as the man with the demons saw Jesus, he yelled, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. At Jesus' command, the many demons left the man and instead went into a herd of pigs. Because Jesus is God, he has authority over the supernatural. This week, we are exploring Lesson 11, Jesus has power over disease and death. And our focus passage is Mark 5, 21 through 43. Today's central truth is that Jesus' power is personal and kind. Let's begin by reading our passage, starting in Mark chapter 5, verse 21. And when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for twelve years, and who had suffered much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus, and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kumi, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was 12 years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. 
For our lesson today, we will break this passage into four key parts. First, a father trusted Jesus, verses 21 through 24. Then, a woman trusted Jesus, verses 25 through 28. Next, Jesus showed power and pity to the woman, verses 29 through 34. Finally, Jesus showed power and pity to the daughter, verses 35 through 43. Why did Jairus come to Jesus? Jairus came to Jesus to beg for his daughter to be healed. He knew that his daughter was close to dying, and he knew that only Jesus had the power to save her. Jairus admitted that there was nothing he could do to save his daughter, and put his trust in the one who could heal her. Why did Jesus stop on his way to heal Jairus' daughter? Even though Jesus was in a hurry to heal Jairus' daughter, he stopped to show power and pity to a sick woman. After 12 years of doctors being unable to heal her, the woman confidently put her faith in Jesus, and he took the time to heal her in a moment. What details show us how Jesus cares for individuals? First. Jesus went with Jairus. Jesus had barely made it off the boat after returning from across the lake, but because he cared for Jairus and his daughter, he went to take care of them. Then Jesus paid attention to other individuals, even though he had an important task to complete, healing Jairus' daughter. Jesus could have focused on getting where he was going and ignoring those around him. Instead, Jesus healed the woman and stopped to talk with her. Finally, Jesus paid attention to the needs of the girl by bringing her back to life and instructing for food to be brought to meet her other basic needs. What does it look like to have faith in Jesus? Faith means complete trust or confidence in someone or something. So having faith in Jesus means that we have complete trust in Jesus to take care of all of our needs. If we have faith in Jesus, we have to admit our own weakness and hold on to only Jesus. In our own lives, having faith in Jesus means submitting to His authority, letting Him be the boss, and trusting that He will take care of us. After calming the storm and casting out demons, Jesus sailed back across Galilee. Although a crowd quickly surrounded him, Jesus saw Jairus' faith and went to heal his daughter. On the way, a bleeding woman touched his robe and was instantly healed. Despite the rush, Jesus took time to identify who she was and encourage her faith. Meanwhile, Jairus' daughter died and people thought it was too late. But with tender words and a tender touch, Jesus raised her from the dead. These two miracles show that Jesus is powerful, but also personal and kind. If he were not powerful, he could not heal our souls, cleanse our sins, and give us eternal life. If Jesus were not personal and kind, he would not care to save us. But since he was powerful and personal, and kind, Jesus is able and willing to save us. So come to Jesus in the only way that saves, by faith, like Jairus and the bleeding woman. Does your life show the same faith that Jairus and the bleeding woman had?